Hi, I'm Greg Rhodes with PSIA and the REI Co-op, and I'm here to cover some tips for you to get your classic skiing down the trail. What we're going to be covering are skills before we put our skis on, moving on flat ground, pole basics, going uphill, going downhill, turning and coming to a stop, and getting up from a fall. Before we put our skis on, let's practice our body position that we're going to use when we're on our skis. It's a basic athletic body position where your ankles and your knees are bent softly and your hips are right over your feet. You can even stand with your hands out in front of you practicing and having this soft bouncing movement to feel the pressure on your bottom of your foot. When we classic ski, we actually stand on one foot. So take that two-footed athletic stance and shift your weight over one foot and practice having that same stable and stacked position on one foot, just like you'd be classic skiing. You can switch feet and try it on both. Now that we're on snow, we're gonna have to put on our skis before we can start sliding. When you put on your skis, put them on the snow, put them parallel to each other. There's no right and left ski, so don't worry about where they're at. And then you're gonna wanna clear the snow off your boot, line your toe up behind the rubber bumper, and push down until it clicks. The first thing you can do when you, to get moving on the snow is to do a little shuffle. Just shuffle your feet underneath you to keep your feet underneath your hips and have that feeling of having a long ski on your foot. You can also think of the shuffle as just walking on your skis. Now we're gonna bring it to the point where we get to actually glide on our skis. The fun advantage of being on cross country skis over just hiking in the snow or being on snowshoes is we get to glide. So let's take that shuffling and add a glide into it. To do this for the first time, a lot of times what we like to talk about is doing a shuffle, shuffle, glide. This way you can practice having your feet underneath you and then gliding on one foot, shuffling with your feet underneath you, and then gliding on the next foot. Let's get to actually kicking and gliding on our cross country skis. When we kick and glide on our skis, or the actual classic stride, what you want to think about is quickly bending your ankles and your knees to set your wax pocket or your grip zone of your ski and gliding onto the new ski. This will be a sequence of a quickly bending your ankle and your knee and driving your other foot forward. One of the best ways that we can have everybody get going on the cross country skis is to actually practice kicking and gliding without using their poles. Let me give you a demo of what I mean by skiing without poles. When you're classic skiing, you really want to remember to focus on setting the pocket and pushing off that ski. Think of bending the ankle and the knee quickly, push down on the ball of your foot, and glide. Push and glide. When we cross country ski, we don't just use our skis and our legs, we actually get to use poles too. Poles provide us an opportunity to use both our upper and our lower body to move more efficiently down the trail, as well as gives us a little bit of balance when we're in that glide position. To start, we're gonna have to put on our poles. When you put on your poles, you wanna go up from the bottom of the strap. I always talk about it as the rabbit comes up through the hole and then grabs onto the tree. You wanna look to make sure that the pole strap is between your hand and the pole. If you put on a pole and the strap is too loose because you grab it below where the strap goes in, this is too loose and you're gonna have to tighten up your strap. Now that we have our poles on, we're gonna really start putting our arms into the skein. Before we start moving and doing the striding, let's actually just work on some basics of double pulling that are gonna be easier to apply. What I like to have people think about the first time is getting that official body position that we've always done. So remember, our ankles and our knees are bent, our hips are over our feet, and now with our hands, we're gonna put them out in front of us, about at the level of our, our mouth. Our elbow is gonna be bent at 90 degrees, not straight, but right at 90 degrees. The first movement pattern you're gonna think about is you're gonna think about activating your core. So when you do this, you wanna have your hands out in front of you, activate the core till your poles come to the snow. Activate the core till the poles come to the snow. One thing that you can check on to make sure you're doing this correctly and that your arms are in the right position, your poles, tips are landing right at the tip of your binding to the tips of your toes. If your arms are too long, they land up by the tips of your skis. If your hands aren't in front of you far enough, they land up by your heels or at the tails of your skis. 
Elbows at 90 degree, activate your core, pull tips to the tops of your bindings. When we're double pulling, we need to do more than just activate our core and bring our pulse to the snow. We actually need to use the pulse to push off of. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna activate your core, bring the pulse to the snow, and then you're gonna drive your elbows back so you push off your pulse to move yourself forward. Activate the core, push and slide forward. One good way to think about the sequence of double pulling is to think about activating my core and then pushing my hands to my pockets. Activate, push to my pockets. Now that we've worked on both kicking with our feet and our skis and our double pulling, let's put that together to actually classic ski or what we call diagonal striding. Diagonal striding uses your arms independently and not together. But the same movement pattern happens with your hand just in front of your shoulder about level with your mouth, elbow at 90 degrees, activate, push with your hand to your pocket, with your other arm swinging through at the same time. The reason why we call it diagonal stride is the timing with your legs is that it's opposite arm, opposite leg. So before you even have your skis on, have your poles on and just walk down the trail and slowly feel like what it feels like to have your poles in your hands and diagonal stride. Now that you have the timing down with your, your walking, put back on your skis and try it with just a little shuffle and low intensity to see if you can get the timing down. Here are a couple easy ways to get up that hill so you can use more of the Nordic centers that you're visiting. Gradual uphills can easily be taken care of, which is shorting up your stride into a, one of those shuffle movements that you did when you first got on your skis. Keep your skis in the track, shuffle up the hill with a shorter push, but make sure you really set that pocket with maybe a little bit more ankle and knee flexion to set that pocket harder when you're getting up that hill. If the hill gets steep enough that that short diagonal stride, you start slipping, you might need to use what we call the herringbone. The herringbone is where you step out of the track, your skis are tips, are going to go out into a V and separate, and you're gonna start rolling your feet into the inside and dig the inside edge of your skis into the snow. You're gonna keep your arms and your legs still in a opposite arm, opposite leg pattern, but you're gonna just slowly step up the hill and use your pulse to make sure you don't slide backwards as you take a step up the hill with your feet in that V shape and the middle edges rolled towards your arches, digging into the snow. The hill gets so steep you might even have to sidestep up the hill or even take off your skis and walk up the hill, especially if it's really deep powder. If you have to use herringbone, sidestepping, or walking up the hill, make sure you step out of the track and keep the track nice and crisp and clean for those that are actually gonna diagonal stride up the hills. If you skied up a hill, you get the opportunity to go down the hill. The first way to get down the hill is keep your skis in the track Get back into that athletic body position, that neutral stance that we started with. Ankles bent, knees bent, hips right over our feet, hands slightly out in front of us, and just keep your skis sliding in the track as you gradually go down the hill. This is something you can use on low angle hills, places that you feel more comfortable. Keeping your skis in the track is a great, safe way to do it. If there's a corner in that downhill, you can usually just ride those skis in the track just like a a train would ride the rails around a corner. If you want to have a little bit more safety and speed control, you can do a half wedge. Shift your weight to your ski that you're going to keep in the track. Lift up your other ski, step it out of the track, shift your weight to the wedge ski, pushing in on the inside edge, and slowly pressuring that ski that's out of the track to control your speed and slow you down. It's easy to lift your leg back up, stick your foot in the track, and continue gliding on. If the hill is too big or you want a little bit more safety and comfort when you're going down the hill, you might want to use a full wedge to get down that hill. At the top of the hill is probably the best time to step all the way out of the track with both feet and now you're going to put both feet into a wedge, meaning you're going to move both heels out, putting your toes together, your tips of your skis together and pushing in on the insides of your feet towards the arch of your foot. This way, you're pushing out with both left and right foot at the same time, and you can really increase the pressure or increase how wide that wedge is to slow down your skis as you're going downhill. Think about it as you're up snow plow, pushing into the snow, slowing yourself down. 
as you're doing this, to make sure and increase that pressure, you're gonna wanna drive your knees towards the tip of your skis, bending your ankles and your knees, keeping your hips right over your feet. If you wanna stop, you're gonna have to really push out hard until you come to a complete stop. One other reminder, whenever you're going down the hills, keeping your hands out in front of you and your pull tips behind you, it's gonna keep you in control as you're going down that hill. If you try to stop yourself with your pull tips, you might catch your pull and take it to your chest or your face. If you come to a hill that's a little too steep for your current abilities, or you don't feel safe going down it, it's okay to take your skis off and walk down the hill. Just one reminder to be courteous of your other cross country skiers and the trail conditions, and make sure you do it to the side, and definitely do not walk down the classic track. One of the great things about cross country skiing is our ski trails wander throughout forests and prairies so there's always gonna be a turn that we're gonna to have to do. There's a couple easy ways to make the turn. First of all, if you're classic skiing, the tracks are gonna easily just guide you around every corner. You just feel like you're a train in the train tracks. Just keep your skis in the tracks and let up the track turn you. Another turn you can use is a step turn. Step turns are really just stepping your inside foot in the direction of the turn and then bringing your other foot parallel with it. If you're moving fast, the rhythm of that is just gonna increase with smaller steps each single time. Just remember it's inside foot, parallel, inside foot, parallel, until you get all the way around the corner and then you can back to gliding straight down the trail. If you use the wedge to get down a hill and there's a turn in the trail, you're gonna have to use what we call a wedge turn. You're gonna keep your feet still in that wedge position, but now you're gonna start steering your feet by pressuring the outside foot a little bit more than the inside foot to steer your skis around a corner. When you're sliding on snow, inevitably, you might fall. This is okay, everybody does it. The first thing to remember when you first are on the snow is to take a deep breath and relax and understand you'll be okay. Then start thinking about how I'm gonna arrange my skis and my poles so everything is untangled and in a straight line and parallel to each other. One way I like to think about it is I like to do what I call a dead bug. I roll over on my back, put my feet up in the air, make sure my skis are parallel, my poles are not tangled, and then slowly drop my feet to the side so my feet are parallel to each other. Now I've found myself in a very untangled position, easy to stand up. If you're excited and interested in trying cross country skiing, we invite you to find your local Nordic Center rent some gear, and get out on the trails. If it'll make you feel a little bit more comfortable, find a Nordic Center with a certified instructor and take a lesson. Thank you for watching. If you found this interesting and valuable, click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you want to know more information, click on one of our other videos.